Butterfly knife tricks are pretty cool, right? Well, I, I just learned some of those. It was really fun. For this week's skill, I thought I'd try out eight bala song tricks with the ultimate goal of combining all of them into one stylish combo. And hopefully also be able to understand what, what the hell is up with butterfly knives anyway? Why are they so flippy? So just so you know, the day that my $6 Amazon trainer knives came in the mail, I knew nothing about how butterfly knives really function. And yes, I used a trainer. I know it's not quite as badass as a real knife, but considering the sheer amount of fails I experienced while filming this video, it was a decision that let me keep my fingers. So to start off, the first thing I learned was the basic open. To do one, hold any of the handles, flick it out and down. Then turn it around as you flick it down again. Then flick it backwards, moving your fingers out of the way as the other handle closes into place. So I was able to get this move in about 10 minutes. Despite how simple this is, I still managed to mess it up. I would flick my knife in this really weird motion instead of just straight down, but it wasn't a big deal. It still worked, <laughs> it still functioned correctly, so I was fine. And don't worry, I fixed it as the five days went on. I was able to do this move consistently after about 20 minutes of practice. And now that I knew the most basic move, yeah. I moved on to trick number two, the wrist pass. This move shouldn't be too hard if you understand it, but I didn't understand it. And I was rewatching tutorial after tutorial, trying to figure out what the hell was going on with this. But after about 20 minutes, I was able to do one. It did kind of suck, but over the five days, it got a lot better. To perform this one, first flick your wrist out and up. Your palm should be facing upwards. Then spin it around with the palm up again. Then just flick the handle back into your hand. Now the third trick I learned on day one is one of my favorites. It's called the basic twirl. This one was really exciting to learn as it looks pretty impressive. First, start in this position. Make sure your hand is on the safe handle because on a real blade, you get cut otherwise. Now to gather momentum, flick the knife backwards, then flick it forward. As it's moving forward, position your index finger in between the blade and safe handle. Also, while you're here, put your middle finger behind the handle. Now use your thumb and middle finger to flick the knife around your hand. You're gonna end up here. Now put your middle finger back onto the other side of the handle and flick the handle back into place. You'll finish here with the blade out. Now that's quite a mouthful. It was really overwhelming for me when I first learned it. My fingers just fumbled around and I was always confused on whether or not I was doing it correctly. I don't know what I'm doing. But as I practiced each individual step, I started to slowly come together. Yes, okay, one good one, come on. Yeah, that was a smooth ass one. But right when I was feeling great about myself, I stepped in dog shit. Yo, can you me? Yeah. Small price to pay for salvation. After learning three tricks in a day, I was extremely excited to continue making progress. And I just kept fidgeting with the knife throughout the day. This helped me get some extra practice in. However, I knew I had to learn a lot more tricks and get a lot better if I wanted to start attempting actual combos. So I still had a lot of things to work on. I was really excited to learn new skills, so I jumped straight into learning the Zen rollover. This is the first trick where I had to let go of the knife and it ended up becoming a great challenge. So in theory, this should be pretty simple, but for me, it was very difficult and for most beginners, it probably will be. When I started, I was flinging the knife everywhere. I feared for my TV, I feared for my life, so I had to sit away from everything fragile to practice it. <sighs> to perform this one, start by gripping the safe handle while the knife is closed. Then flick the knife inwards to the right. As the knife comes around your thumb, catch it by the bite handle. And right after you catch it, you perform a wrist pass so the blade doesn't cut your finger. After 10 minutes, I started to notice some progress with the knife actually turning around my hand instead of flying the opposite direction. But it took time for me to actually catch it. <laughs> that was really slow, but... <laughs> Even from here, the blade would graze my hand. On a real knife, this would be a big no-no. So I worked on transitioning into my wrist pass, which was hard, but I was able to eventually do it. After this trick, I learned the Y2K. The Y2K is a very similar trick. I'd actually would say that it's easier. So I just do that. Oh, sorry. 
That's not that hard. <laughs> I should have learned this one first. To do this one, perform the same inward flip to the right, except you hold it by the bite handle. Now when you catch the knife, all you have to do is just flick it back upwards to finish the trick, like the end of a basic open. It didn't take me very long to get it. And now with these two tricks learned, I moved on to the basic aerial. Hold any handle in this position, then just flick and throw it upwards. After one rotation, you catch it as the handles click together. On a technical level, this is the most simple trick. Oh. <laughs> but I personally really struggled in making mine consistent. It always just felt like luck when I got it, as most of the time would under or over rotate. <laughs> what just happened? But after working on it for a little bit, I moved on to trick number seven, which is to fan the knife. So, if you want to fan, use your thumb and index finger to push the blade to the right. With this initial momentum, use your wrist and a little of your arms to keep the rotation going. From here, if you start getting faster, the blade should become completely flat. Supposedly, going slow where the blade stays sticking up is the wrong way to do it, but I personally think both look pretty cool. But on day two, I was mostly stuck doing it the slow way, and I struggled to keep the rotation going. I was eventually able to get a kind of baby fan, but I was able to improve it throughout the five days. So from here, I started to experiment with little mini combos, which I thought would help me work up to a bigger one. For the most part, I just failed over and over again, but I got a few successes here and there. On day three, I didn't learn very many new tricks, but I had a lot of fun trying out different combo combinations, trying to figure out what works together and what doesn't. Although it may look pretty cool from a distance, a lot of what I was doing was still pretty bad because the blade was constantly grazing my fingers. So I had to really work on improving my form. I learned one final trick on day four, which was the gambler's dagger. To do this trick, start in this position. Now flick the knife around your index finger, and if you want, use your middle finger to assist. Now you should be here with your index finger inside and your middle finger on the outside. Now flick the knife backwards into your middle finger, then back up, then backwards, but this time all the way around. Kind of like the ending of a basic twirl. I think it's one of the coolest looking ones that I learned, but it was really hard. The hardest part was the beginning, just flicking it all the way around your hands. It took me a while to be able to do this correctly. I also got confused with how many flicks I had to do. You can do it either four flicks or six flicks, but for now, I only did four flicks. From here, I started thinking of a combo that combined everything I learned, but still flowed and looked cool. And then that's the most important part, honestly. It, it has to look cool. So the combo that I thought of was to start with the gambler's dagger. And since it ends with my hand holding the safe handle, I go right into a zen rollover. From here, go into a basic twirl. And right after doing that, into a basic aerial. Then fanning, then transition into another aerial, then now a vertical facing fan. And from here, perform a basic close. I think these skills together can form a pretty stylish and seamless combo if done right. And it specifically challenged me because my basic aerials were just not consistent. So I just threw two of them into there. From here, I started practicing the combo itself and sometimes individual parts of it, just working on smoothly transitioning. But I was still extremely inconsistent and I would just fail transitioning from trick to trick, especially from aerial to fanning. It was really hard, but I knew the only way I could work up to it was with practice. So I did that. Today is day five, four days of practice. I'm really hoping I could land this combo today. I was extremely hopeful that I would be able to land the combo that I thought of the day before. So I just went for it. But so many problems came with doing that. Newer tricks I learned I'd mess up on. My transitions were wonky and mechanic and the blade would sometimes graze my hand, which would invalidate the entire trick. But I knew if I just kept going for it, things would improve and I would eventually get it. Bro. 
I'm hungry. So I gotta go, I gotta go take a break right now. I was really starting to doubt that I've landed today and I landed it. Woohoo! Yeah! This combo was extremely fun and rewarding to pull off. And it looked pretty cool, which like I said earlier, yeah, that, that's the most important part. It has to look cool. This skill gave me an experience that forced me to be a bit more patient with my learning and also helped me accept that sometimes when you're learning something, you, you might fail hundreds of times, but that's okay. I am planning on learning some more advanced tricks later on in the future. So if you want to see me do some more cool shit, <laughs> be sure to subscribe if you want. So thank you guys for watching. I appreciate the support. And uh, like always, just have an awesome day. See you guys in the next video.